Reincarnation is the cornerstone belief of many world religions, including Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism, Taoism, Shintoism, and Zoroastrianism. The idea that our consciousness survives physical death and is reborn into new bodies was believed by great minds, such as Plato, Socrates, Spinoza, Leibniz, Voltaire, Hume, Schopenhauer, Emerson, Whitman, Napoleon, Franklin, Goethe, and Gandhi. Many researchers, including Dr. Ian Stevenson, have dedicated their lives to proving the phenomenon by meticulously documenting and verifying over 3,000 cases of children remembering and confirming knowledge from past lives. In his six-volume work, spanning over 40 years of investigation, Dr. Stevenson reported on children from around the world able to remember so much about their previous lives that he was able to locate former friends, relatives, villages, houses, and possessions based solely on the children's testimony. Published in distinguished scientific periodicals such as the American Journal of Psychiatry, the Journal of Nervous Medicine and Disease, and the International Journal of Comparative Sociology, even the American Medical Association Journal stated that Dr. Stevenson has, quote, painstakingly and unemotionally collected a detailed series of cases in which the evidence for reincarnation is difficult to understand on any other grounds. If you are personally still unconvinced that reincarnation is real, I highly recommend reading Dr. Stevenson's work or my book, Spiritual Science. Along with reincarnation, two other afterlife beliefs are often featured prominently in the world's religions, namely judgment and sin or karma. Buddha said, everything in the universe is the fruit of a just law, the law of causality, the law of cause and effect, the law of karma. Karma bills itself as essentially the moral and spiritual equivalent to Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal opposing reaction. What goes around comes around, and do unto others as you would have done unto you, because either in this life or the next, the scales of justice will remain balanced. Whether it is the Christian judgment of one's sins, the books of the dead weighing one's heart on the scales, or the Hindu-Buddhist notion of karma determining one's rebirth, the idea that our moral decisions in life are recorded, analyzed, and scrutinized during the afterlife is nearly ubiquitous. On the surface, this may seem just and good that our actions are judged and reflected in our afterlife experience, and that evil people will eventually have to atone for their sins. But a deeper examination reveals that under the surface, this system is really not fair or balanced at all. First of all, there is no God-given life instruction manual, no objective standard or unanimously agreed-upon set of rules for what constitutes a sinless, karma-free existence. There are thousands of religions and holy texts, each with their own unique set of precepts, laws, or commandments, and no two are exactly alike. How are we to know whether to follow the Buddhist Eightfold Path, the Christian Ten Commandments, the Egyptian Forty-Two Prohibitions, or any other sacred set of directives? Furthermore, the holy books of these religions state that most everyone falls short of their nearly impossible standard. For example, in the Christian Bible, Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And Ecclesiastes 7.20 says, Indeed, there is no one on earth who is righteous, no one who does what is right and never sins. In the Hindu Bhagavad Gita 8.16, it says, From the highest plane in the material world down to the lowest, all are places of misery wherein repeated birth and death take place. And in the Buddhist text, Sutta Napada, it says, Countless lives we have lived in this samsara, so full of suffering. It is hard to find someone who has not been our mother or father. So even if we are lucky enough to choose the correct religion and perfectly follow its moral directives, we are informed that our efforts are still almost certainly in vain, and we will have to suffer due to falling short of their near impossible standard. Beyond the ambiguity of moral precepts and the near impossibility of maintaining them, we are also surrounded by billions of other confused sinners acting out their karma. Just by proximity alone, from sharing the earth with so many people involved in their own internal struggles, it is ensured that we will be repeatedly challenged throughout our lives 
and eventually accrue negative karma from some of these interactions. We all have bad days navigating this world of suffering, dealing with a myriad of miserable people, living in physical bodies that deliver us chemical doses of roller coaster emotions. Is it really fair to be judged so harshly for simply trying to survive and do our best in this far from perfect world? Wouldn't a loving, benevolent creator put us in a safe, caring environment if they truly wanted us to learn, grow, and thrive? How just is it to put people in a dangerous, confusing world full of sin and sinners, then punishing anyone who falls short of absolute perfection? It seems the message of Jesus Christ, the perfect Son of God, being crucified on the cross, is that this evil world is so fallen that even God in the flesh could not thrive or survive here. Instead, he would only be able to help a small group of fortunate people before ultimately being tortured and murdered for his efforts. We see this repeatedly throughout history as well, with humanitarians like Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy, and Mahatma Gandhi being assassinated rather than applauded for their activism. There are several cliché phrases hinting at this truth as well, such as, only the good die young. Virtue is its own punishment. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. And no good deed goes unpunished. These have become idioms and proverbs because they have proven true over generations and speak of inherent injustices most everyone can relate to and identify with. These ideas of virtue being its own punishment, or no good deed going unpunished, run completely contrary to the ideas of karma or justice. So which is true, that life isn't fair, and nice guys finish last? Or like the Buddha said, that everything is the fruit of the just law of karma? Isabella Green, in Leaving the Trap, said, The whole idea of karma quite literally means that if a person caused suffering to others during their life, which in one way or another most of us do, then this person has to pay off this karma in a different life, where they are the ones who are now suffering. The whole idea makes me wonder who exactly came up with it and fed it to humans to begin with. From this perspective, I would suggest that the idea of facing one's karma, also known as Judgment Day, is an artificial construct generated to keep the reincarnation cycle going.